The second half of the last, last half of the day, as if we will know when the guest lecturer will stop. Today will be fantastic work. It will be a fantastic work. Because our regular scholar, professor of Arabic and Islamic study, will justify the confidence we put in both again. And I believe each and everybody that are present here today, at the end of the day, we will have the cause to thank God that we will give him this type of uh, opportunity. Uh, the letter we cover from now is in the 1.30. The 12.30, sorry. Then from 12.30 to 1, there will be room for observation, comment, and question and answer. Uh, For the benefit of those who are unable to be present here today, if they can click on the South Hilda TV, South Hilda TV and Facebook, they will watch this program live. It means that uh, as the lecture going on here, everybody in the whole world who can click to this link and watch this uh, program live. So that is why we don't want anybody to sleep this time of life. Because if you sleep, people in the whole world, like in America, <coughs> in Germany, they will watch you that time. So please let us listen this thing attend to it. I will now hand over the microphone to the chairman of this location uh, so that they can invite the guest lecturer. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستعدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وشر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشر أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله ربه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن دعا بدعوته واستمسك بسنته إلى أن يرث الله الأرض ومن عليها وبعد برادس عن سيسس الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I have to appreciate the invitation and thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity uh, to come and share some of my thoughts with uh, the learned group here, the, the learned people, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, the topic I gave uh, was contemplating the message of the Quran, contemplating over the message of the Quran. A glance at Surah to Yunus. Surah Yunus, just one surah uh, of the 114 surah of the Quran. Uh, and this uh, confirms to us the, the divine nature of the Quran. It is really a message that is beyond humans. The, uh, the very arrangement that Allah has put in the verses. Just you can say on passing. Uh, it is not that it is something very specific. No. This, uh, it is one of the many, many surahs of the Quran. But uh, <coughs> the way Allah SWT put the verses and the issues that were raised is very, very marvelous. Uh, and the reason why I say contemplating is the issue of uh, tadabbur. Tadabbur, we know, is to think over and reflect over, over and over again. And this is based on a very clear instruction from Allah SWT for us in three verses. Three verses of the Quran. But before coming to them, I'll just read what I have written in the beginning. I said the glorious Quran is the last message 
of the Almighty Creator to guide the actions and conduct of the two heavy creations, the Athakalain. Athakalain, we know we have uh, all other creations have been guided by the Lord and Creator in life of in a particular pattern and they have to live in that particular pattern. Only the two heavy creations, the jinn and man, were of different nature. Because Allah created them differently and their functions and their role is different and the way they should conduct themselves here and the eventual return and the recompense with Allah will be different also. For all other creations, uh, like the animals as we have been men have mentioned by the Prophet in one of these hadiths, uh, Allah will uh, make sure that there should be a retaliation between an, uh, a goat that has horns and the one that has no horns. And then after Allah has finished all the judgment between them, Allah will order them to turn to drought, to, to dust. That will be the time when the unbeliever, the disbeliever will also hope he was made, he will, he will just be turned into uh, dust like all other creations. But for man and jinn, their role is completely different and their, the, the, their vocation here on earth is completely different also. So the two heavy creations in the world, jinn and man, it has been perfected. I mean the message of the Quran has been perfected, revealed, collated, preserved and protected for humanity to the end of time. Allah perfected the message. He revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi through Angel Jibreel and then uh, piecemeal in a period of 23 years. But then it was collated and then put in one between two covers and then it was later transmitted to us and Allah promised that he is going to protect and preserve this particular message to the end of time. So there is no one, whether a man or jinn, whether an enemy or a friend, that will try to do anything regarding the Quran that Allah will leave him. No, Allah has taken it upon himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect and preserve this message. Unlike the earlier messages that were given to, the, to, their, to their scholars, were given the responsibility of preserving the message. The Quran as the last complete communication from Allah, the Almighty Creator, has been revealed to man for him to understand his position, his position on earth, the purpose of his creation, his destiny, and the ultimate everlasting existence beyond the world. The ultimate everlasting existence that will come after this life. It is meant to be studied and acted upon. Reflection upon the meaning, arrangement, order, eloquence, miracles and stories and all that has been mentioned in the Quran has been emphasized in the Quran. Allah has emphasized upon us to think and reflect over the meanings, the arrangement of the words, the eloquence and every aspect that has been mentioned in the Quran. And this is what we call tadabbur, tadabbur or deep reflection, deep reflection on, uh, on what Allah uh, is what, uh, is what Allah has suggested in three different places in the Quran. Allah is saying, "Auz billahi minash shaitan wa ta'ala la nisa, auz billahi minash shaitan wa afala yatadabbaruna al-Qur'an, wa law kana min 'inda ghayri Allah la wajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira." Allah is saying, "Why are they not contemplating over the meanings of the Quran? Why are they not on pondering over the meanings and everything of the Quran?" If it were to have come from other than Allah, there will have many discrepancies in it. There will be a lot of dis uh, uh, contradictions. This is a challenge. It is a challenge to the intellectuals that there is no discrepancy, there is no contradiction, there is no mistake in the Quran. And that's why Allah started the Surah Al-Baqarah by saying, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ This is a book in which there is no apology. We don't apologize, we write books, we say, oh, if there, if there is any mistake in it, it is from me or from the devil. Isn't it? But the Quran started by, There is no doubt in it. There is no apology, there is no mistake in it. If it were to have come from other than Allah, there would have been a lot of contradictions. Why? 
because this is a book that was revealed in a period of 23 years 23 years if you want to just uh, check this check what Allah has mentioned in the Quran in the first year in the 13th year in the 19th year and in the 23rd year you will see there is all we can say synergy and they all tally and they give the proper meaning why because it is revealed by the all wise creator who has created intellect and who has created man and who gave him the, the power to know and understand Allah said again Kitabun anzal nahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab This is a, a, a blessed book Kitabun, a, a book we have revealed unto you a blessed one liyadabbaru ayati so that they will contemplate over the ayahs over the verses and think over and so that those who have been given intellect they will learn to be, uh, to be pious then Allah said number in the third place afala yatadabbaruna alquran am ala qulubin aqfaluha why are they not reflecting over the quran or is it that their hearts have been locked that is there are locks that have been placed over their heart and that's why they cannot understand they, they don't even have the propensity and the uh, the potentiality of receiving the quran and contemplating upon it and then understanding it these are the three verses that called upon us to reflect over the Quran. Let us, let us not just be reading the Quran so as so that our 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 concern is to reach the end to reach the end of the surah or the end of the Quran. No, we are supposed to. And one of the pious uh, believers was saying, uh, uh, "It is better for me throughout the night to be reflecting over Surah Al-Zalzala." for the whole of the night so that I will be reading it over and over contemplating over its meaning okay so it is so important that it is not just to read uh, reading will get the sawab you will get the uh, reward from Allah Ta'ala but try to imbibe to imbibe the message of the Quran that can be done while coming very close to it and contemplating over the meanings uh, the above verses clearly indicate the imperative of the double and avoidance of superficiality as regards reading the Quran uh, because the message of, it is the message of our creator to us it is the message of guidance it, it, it is a complete compendium of everything you needed in life uh, I said I thought of talking on Surah uh, Yunus and the marvelous arrangement of the verses on what Allah, on what man should know of himself, his creator, his universe, his purpose of uh, existence, his environment, his destiny, his psychology, and attitude of all, all, all of this were mentioned in very few verses of this surah. Very few verses of this surah mention this, and you can recognize this by contemplation. When you just read, you say, yes, maybe that is all. You will not try to get the meanings, the inner meanings that are supposed to be in those, uh, in those verses. The surah appraises the position of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the rational evidence, rational evidence for accepting the Quran as a true revelation from Allah. Uh, to him for the entire humanity and to the end of time going through the verses and contemplating upon the, man, the matters raised give one uh, give one strong conviction of the inimitability inimitability of the glory of the contents of the Quran it cannot be imitated nobody can bring something similar to the Quran it is inimitable of the contents and the truth of Islam as well as a powerful belief if you contemplate over the verses you will end up having a powerful belief in the divine nature of the Quranic message the issues are great and vital for the meaning of uh, for the, to the meaning of man's existence here on earth his role 
purpose and everything that pertains to him in life. As it is known in philosophy, the most important things in, the, in their discourse in the world are ultimate reality, isn't it? And that is Allah, then man, and then universe. Because these are the three most important things. God, or ultimate reality as they call him in philosophy, then man, the most important, the BBI, a very, very important person in this existence, the leader of creation, isn't it? And then the universe itself. So all these are three important areas, Allah, man, and the world, have been um, uh, um, amply and heavily uh, mentioned in this, in this very few verses of the Quran, of this uh, surah, in a very marvelous way. So these are the areas, uh, the universe, man and uh, universe. These are, uh, I mean, ultimate reality, man and universe. For human reflection on these matters is what uh, is, is uh, that is man's reflection in philosophy has been on these main themes, these three main themes. The glorious Quran, the last message of Allah to man, in few immutable verses, of what we are going to see has authoritatively expounded those fundamental issues in many in very unambiguous terms. In Tafhim al Quran, that is the tafsir of uh, uh, Maulana Maududi, uh, you can even get it online. It's very, very good if you want uh, to have a very good and elucidating tafsir of the Quran. It is EnglishTafsir.com. When you will get the whole of the surah, englishtafsir.com, you can take it and uh, read it. Uh, for you can make it your reference book, really. So a summary was given of the content of this surah, and uh, I will read uh, through. They said, the people consider it a strange thing that this message is being conveyed by a human being and, char uh, and charge him with uh, sorcery. Whereas there is nothing strange in it, nor has it any connection with sorcery or so fame. It simply informs you of the two realities. Two realities. First, Allah, who has created the universe and manages it, is in fact your maker and Lord, and He alone is entitled to your worship. The second reality is that after the life in this world, there will be another life in the next world, where you shall have to render full account of the life of this world and he and be rewarded or punished according to whether you adopted the righteous attitude as required by him after acknowledging him as your master or acted against his will. That is your, uh, the, uh, the recompense uh, will be in accordance with how you have chosen to live here on earth. Both of these realities which the messenger is presenting before you are realities in themselves whether you acknowledge them as such or not. He is inviting you to accept this and regulate your lives in accordance with them if you accept this, you will have a very blessed end. Otherwise, you shall meet with evil consequences. This is the summary that was given of the surah in that tafsir. Tafsir Tafhim al-Quran of Maududi, Maulana Maududi. So, coming to the surah, uh, the opening verses of surah to Yunus, one of the Meccan period, uh, of the late Meccan period that it was revealed in Mecca and the late part of that period when the argument, the opposition was so, so intense against the Prophet and against this message it seemed to be addressing the crude man the crude man, unrefined the one that has no religion, has nothing most of the issues that uh, a man just we say the one who say crude man uh, somebody who is uneducated, who has no civilization, nothing uh, at all. Who finds himself in this magnificent universe looking for explanation on everything. 
You see, when man uh, uh, finds himself in this world without revelation, without any knowledge, he will, he will be dumbfounded, isn't it? What the existence about himself, who is he? What is he supposed to be doing here? What brought him here? What about the universe around? All of these questions are answered in these few verses of Surah Yunus. That is the crude man who finds himself in this magnificent universe looking for a explanation of everything. Looking for explanation of everything, beginning from himself, who he is, what he is, the universe around him, the heavens, the earth, his environment, the origins and destiny of all that exists. All these are issues that will come to his mind looking for answers to them. So these verses have addressed, this surah have addressed all this. The issues mentioned are a clear indication of the intensity of the opposition and conflict uh, that was raging at the time of its revelation. That is, unbelievers were seriously opposing and in serious conflict with the Prophet ﷺ regarding the Quran and regarding his, his own person. So, uh, I wanted even maybe, it is not, it is just like a tafsir session, but uh, I will not take it to be tafsir. Uh, the verses are there. Uh, those who wanted to follow us, they can open their Quran and follow, isn't it? I'll be reading uh, and mentioning the issues. Some of the key areas touched on in this verses are number one. Allah started the surah by saying, "Auz billahi min shaitan al bismillah rahman rahim alif lam ra tilka ayat al kitab al hakim hakim akana lil nas ajaban an awhayna ila rajul minhum an anzir al nas wa bashir al ladina amanu." أن لهم قدم صدق عند ربهم قال الكافرون إن هذا لساحر مبين. الله استاتس سين تد ألف لام را ونوزي ود مفسرين عسين رجالين ذيس خروف المقطعة they call them that is the the alpha Arabic alphabet with which every Arabic is formed. Whatever you want to say in Arabic will be just like our A B C D or their A B C D isn't it? We have our other chat up. Yes, the A B C D. For all English, you will do it from this A B C D. So Alif Lam Ra. Allah says, "Tilka ayatul kitab al Hakim." These are the verses of a wise book. So it means we should expect hikmah in this book. Then Allah started with a very very important issue that has, you can say, disturbed the minds of man. Is there any possibility of communication between Allah the Creator, the Magnificent, and His creations here on earth? أَكَانَ لِلنَّاسَ عَجَبًا أَنْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنْهُ أَنْ أَنْذِرِ النَّاسَ وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُ Is it surprise for humans that Allah will choose one of them and will decide to send His guidance through Him to them? Is this something surprising? Is this something uh, they think impossible? No, this is the reality. It is, uh, it, is some, it is real. So it is Allah, the Almighty, all great creator who chose to communicate with humans and by revelation. With this what, what we call wahi. Al-wahi. He chose, as he is mentioned uh, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah who is tafi min al-malaikati rusulan wa min al-nas. Allah choose, uh, chooses messengers from among the angels and from among humans. He will choose an angelic messenger, pass his message to him to a human messenger, so that that human messenger will pass it to humans. So uh, it is uh, Allah chooses that, and He has the power, and He has done it. Because the 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 last of the messengers has come and gone. And Allah has raised messengers in each and every nation. You see, this verse is, if uh, it is to, our, to my surprise, even all what the Quran has been saying, you can see it has been summarized in these verses. Maybe up to the uh, just half of the surah, you uh, as we will see, inshallah. So, the reality of divine communication it is real. Allah has been communicating with humans. From the time of Adam as Allah told us in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, isn't it? When Allah created the first man Adam, 
and he sent him down here on earth together with his wife Eve on one part and the devil on the other part, isn't it? And then Allah promised guidance from that time. For Imma Yati and Nukun Minni Huda, for Manta Bia Hudaya Fala Hawfun Alay him. Anybody, I will be sending my guidance. Anybody who will follow it, he will have nothing of worry in this life. His life will be a very, very enjoyable life. Man Amila Saleham min Zakarin Aw Unfa Wahu Mumin, Fala Nuhuya Nahu Hayatam Tayiba. We are going to make him to live a very, very enjoyable life of peace here on earth because Allah will be with him. Allah will maintain uh, peace and his help to him because he is in good books. He is in good terms with his creator. So Allah will take care of him here on earth. And then on, in the next life, he will have the best of rewards. So Allah promised guidance and that guidance has been coming from the time of uh, Adam السلام, who was sent as a messenger, a prophet and a messenger to his family, to his family members. And then from that time Allah has been sending other prophets and messengers. The first of the major messengers or messenger as a whole to a nation was Nuh السلام, whom Allah mentioned uh, in the hadith of uh, Shafa'a of Sahihain uh, that confirm that on the day of judgment people will uh, be waiting for the start of retribution that is the recompense and then uh, after, Allah, uh, after Allah has raised all, all humans to life then they will go to Adam, they will go to uh, uh, Nuh السلام, from Adam they will come to Nuh they will say, oh Nuh, you are the first messenger the first and the awal rasul so that gives him that particular position of being the first messenger that was sent to a nation uh, we know of uh, his a whole surah that was revealed uh, around him, Nuh alayhi salam. So they will uh, call on him and then uh, uh, that is, uh, this message of guidance, this promise, promise of guidance that was sent down from Adam to Nuh alayhi salam to all the other prophets and then finally to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam which has been perfected and put together all in all in this particular book which is preserved and protected to the end of time and that is what gives you confidence as a believer that yes you are really working on something that you are very much sure of isn't it it is all like the earlier books the earlier revelations that were corrupted and interpolated by their own people for various reasons but this one is a completely different why so that it will serve as hujah of Allah to the end of time so that nobody will come from the time of the revelation to the end of time and say oh Allah when I came to this world there was no true guidance of yours protected and preserved that is why I lived uh, I live in my own way isn't it no to the end of time Allah has promised to protect this message so that nobody will have any excuse on the day of judgment and say, Oh Allah, when I came to the world at the time of my living on earth, there was no preserved message from you. So the reality of divine communication, revelation, and this is so as to establish everything. You see, uh, the Prophet as this surah confirms also, he was a, a man, one of the many people that were living at his own time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said uh, 570 or 571 according to when he was born and he died 632 of Christian era. <coughs> he was one of the many people that were living around. But what made him different? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What were the issues that made him completely different from others? And what were, what were those issues that credited him with him being accepted as Allah's messenger? What were his credentials? What were his qualifications that made people to accept him as a true prophet and messenger representing Allah in the message he was passing on to us? Yes, there were issues and this surah mentioned it. Uh, I have mentioned I think around 30 something issues. I don't know whether the time would be enough for us. 30, almost 37. Uh, this one which uh, re re refers to the Prophet is around 20 something but uh, we will come to it inshallah uh, okay so that is the first thing that is the possibility not nay the reality 
of divine communication and this is so as to establish everything because without without you believing in the Quran as Allah's revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then there is no basis of being a Muslim isn't it because it is on the basis of you accepting him as a true prophet and messenger of Allah and that what he has revealed was not were not his ideas it was a true revelation that was given to him that was what made you contented that yes you are on something very well which you are very much sure of and that is the Quran which is a true revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the impact of good and righteous life uh, in this order that is when we look at our own lives there are people who live in a, a righteous life here on earth for those for example who are irreligious those who do not bring religion in their lives yes they know there are people who live righteously isn't it and there are people who are evil so does it mean that if you are righteous there will not be any consequence on your being righteous here in this world for them we can ask them isn't it those irreligious people but for us we know yes when you act righteously here on earth you will see the reward here on earth before the next life yes the verse Allah has already confirmed to us that uh, whatever good you do you will get as we can say some, some portion of it some portion of the reward here before there because Allah will help you because he controls everything and he sees everything and he knows everything as long as you are good to his creation for example or being righteous then Allah will take care of you but the only condition is that if you are good and philanthropic to Allah's creations and you are not a believer then Allah will reward you here in this world on the basis of what is in your what is in your heart and what you are what you are looking for what you wanted to achieve Allah will give it to you here on earth but you are not going to get anything in the nature except the hellfire because of your lack of belief so the only thing that will make your philanthropism good and rewarding in this world and in the next life and you see the difference between us and those who do not believe is that they are one-eyed they see only this world everything to them finishes here and there is nothing after death isn't it but for a believer in religious guidance that is for all those who believe in religion they know that this there is life beyond the grave that's another life that's another life and that's why because you cannot even explain the whole of this world without a clear reference to the next life i was just mentioning i think maybe in the morning uh, or yesterday if someone kills another person as uh, judges and lawyers you know uh, if you are to implement kisas isn't it law of kisas you are going to kill him what of if he killed 100 persons what are you going to do about him nothing you see so that brings the reality of the next life for you to have killed 1000 people 1 million people you will get equal recovery, equal punishment for what you have done and that can only happen in the next life yeah in this world you can only kill him once and that is all he has only one life isn't it so that is the impact of good uh, good living if you are good to Allah's creation Allah will reward you according to uh, your intentions in this world but if you are good to Allah's creation and you are a believer then you are going to get ample reward in this enjoyable life here on earth and a very ample reward in the next life then uh, who is the lord of the creation you see uh, when you go back to the verses uh, allah is saying uh, let me even open it akana lin nas ajaban an awhayna ila rajulin minhum an anzir an nas wa bashir al ladina amanu anna lahum qadam sidqan inda rabbihim qala al kafirun inna hadha la sahir mubin inna rabbakum allah i said uh, somebody a crude person who finds himself in this world the first thing that will come to his mind is who he is and who created him so allah started by saying inna rabbakum allah alladhi khalaq as samawati wal ardh fi sittati ayyam definitely your lord and creator is allah definitely your lord inna rabbakum allah your lord is allah 
who created the heavens and that in six days, some must tower al arsh, and then he established himself on the throne. Judah Birul Amr. He controls everything. He is the total controller of everything that you can see or you cannot see. Judah Birul Amr. There is no one that can come as an interceder, that can intercessor, uh, other than uh, except after his permission. That is Allah, your Lord, fa'abuduhu. That is Allah, your Lord and Creator, worship Him. And that is your purpose of existence. Your purpose of existence is when you recognize him as the Lord of creation who has created the heavens and the earth and there is no one who can claim that even till today. No one has claimed that he's, he created the heavens and the earth, isn't it? And we can, there cannot be anything created without a creator, isn't it? So the heavens and the earth were created and no one makes the claim except Allah, isn't it? He said, Inna Rabbakumu Allahu Alladhi, Allahu Alladhi Khalaq As-Samawat. Allah kept on saying it all, all over in the Quran, over and over again. That He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. And He is the one who controls everything. And that is your Lord, you should worship Him. And that is the purpose of your creation. The reason for your being here, when you find yourself here in this world, is that you are created and you have been, you have been created by Allah and the purpose of creation is for you to be in servitude to your Lord and Creator that is in line with what He has uh, revealed. You are not just to live as you like on your own ideas or on the ideas of others, philosophies of others, no. You have a Lord and Creator and He has right over you, over anybody. The, his rights on you are over any rights of anybody, isn't it? Allah Allah al khalqu wal amr. Allah said he is the one who creates and so he is the one who controls. He is the one who creates and he is the one who gives commands. Because he is the only creator. All others, if they give commandment, if they give orders, they are only giving it maybe in lieu or in, uh, maybe in, in position, isn't it? In a position that was given to them. But the, the, control, the supreme controller of everything, the supreme creator is Allah. So he is, he is the one who is supposed to control everything. You the Birul Am, total control uh, in, in this order. Creation of man. Uh, Allah is saying, Fa'abudu afala tadakkarun, ilayhi marjiukum jami'an. As I said, the crude man that will find himself in this world, <coughs> trying to understand his environment, the universe and everything, Allah is telling that Allah is your Lord. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth and that you should worship him and then he is telling Ilayhi marji'ukum jami'an You are all going to be returned to him Ilayhi It means life, uh, death is not the end of the story We are being returned to Allah For what? For judgment Ilayhi marji'ukum jami'an wa'adan alayhi haqqan This is a true promise of Allah he has promised it, he has put it upon himself that he is going to raise us back to life into another life, a different life entirely. Innahu yabdawul khalqa summa yu'iduhu li ajizia alladhina amanu He is the one who uh, creates and then he, uh, he brings back the creation. Uh, just as uh, uh, we know, the unbelievers, especially at the time of the revelation of the Quran, well, one of the greatest problems they had with the Prophet ﷺ, with the issue of resurrection. They said, how can you say, how, how, what, can, what are you saying? After we have turned to dust, there is no trace of us. And you are saying that we are going to be raised to life for our judgment. Some of them, one of them will come with a bone, a, one of bone of humans or animal, he will be uh, uh, squeezing it to powder. And he will be telling to the Prophet ﷺ, are you saying that God is going to raise this back to life? The Prophet said, yes. He said, yes. Allah will raise him back to life and he will put you in hellfire. This is what Allah made reference to at the end of Surah Yasin. Allah said, whoever 
Then Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Qaf also, <coughs> That is Allah says, We know what part of the earth is eaten what part of your body. Which part of the earth has eaten which part of the body? We know it. So, Inna zalika ala Allah yasir. Allah has power and he knows everything. Whether you were eaten by a lion or died in the sea by a fish or whatever, then Allah knows where your body is. And if you have been buried on uh, in earth, which is on the, on the, in the mother earth, as he used to say, definitely yes, Allah knows which part of the earth has eaten which part of your body. And he is going to bring everything to, uh, together. The example Allah gave us uh, at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah regarding uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Ibrahim alayhi salam was asking Allah SWT, Allah Rabbi Arini kaifa tuhil mawta. Oh Allah, show me how you will raise the dead back to life. Allah said, uh, don't, don't, you, you didn't, didn't you believe? He said, definitely I believe. So that I will have contentment in my heart that you have power to do this. Then Allah said, فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الطَّيْرِ فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِنْهُنَّ جُزْءًا ثُمَّ دُعُهُنَّ يَأْتِينَكَ سَعَيَا وَأَلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah told him to take different, four different boats, boats and then to mix them, their, um, their, their everything together, their blood, their bones and their everything and then he, he, should took the, he should take the different portions of this he divided into four on different mountains he put these parts and then he will see how Allah is going to revive it when Allah will say for the bird or is it a peacock or whatever all the different parts of it will come from the different from the four mountains and it will be assembled and it will come uh, it will become a bird a complete bird okay so Allah has power over all things so this is part of their problem thinking that how can you tell us that after we have died and we have uh, become dust that we, are going to be, we will be brought back to life Allah said no this is something this is a promise which I have promised and the reason for our being raised back to life is for Allah to reward those who have done good with the best of rewards and to punish those who have done bad whatever is the magnitude of their evil Allah will reward them in recompense uh, in, in, in consonance, that in accordance then the, the Quran also mentioned this verses that is the sun that some people are worshipping, uh, the moon and all the other heavenly bodies, the planets and the stars were all created by Allah. The moon Allah has set and uh, put it at uh, different stages. By means of the sun and the moon you know your own counting. That is, it means they have been created to serve you, to serve you in that purpose. Allah in truth he created all this. In truth he has created it. And then Allah said definitely in the alternation of the night and the day. And in whatever Allah has created, there are signs for those who care to think over and reflect. Issue of tadabur, isn't it? Uh, Allah is saying in uh, Surah Al-Araf أَوَلَمْ يَنْزُرُوا فِي مَلَقُوتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah gave an open license to all humans to think and reflect over all His creation. Let them go and search and research over everything that Allah has created. Uh, it's open license. Let them go into researches, into the animal world, into uh, zoology, that is zoology, biology and whatever sciences, isn't it? Let them go to the heavens, let them go to the moon and other planets if they can. So that they will see, they will now, it is Allah call on us to go into deep research on each and every aspect of his creation.
Then Allah said, "Inna ladina la yarjuna liqa'ana wa radu bil hayat al-dunya wa dhanu biha wa ladina hum an ayatina wa filun ulaya kama awahum al-nar." Allah mentioned something very, very important in the life of humans. That is attachment to this world and the fact regarding it. Those who do not hope meeting with us, it is when you don't believe in the next life, you believe you are one-eyed, you believe in only this world, you are contented with it. Everything here is okay for you. You don't see any other life coming after this. Allah mentioned this clearly. No, to, to call their minds to, to this fact, إن الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا ورضوا بالحياة بعثمان وبها والذين هم عن آياتنا غافلون أولئك مع وهم النار. These are the people whose whose end will be the hellfire. The Makan we explain because of what they have done. So you are you are class materialism. You are intense love of the world. And as Allah said regarding the disbelievers, يعلمون ظاهرا من الحياة الدنيا وهم عن الآخرة هم غافلون. That is, they know everything, and this is this is what we see with our different, uh, this especially Western civilization. They have made all they could of researches to make life easy for man. You can say that they have mastered, they have conquered the world. They studied man. They knew everything regarding him. They studied the environment and everything to know the minutest details so that how they can benefit from that and protect themselves from harm. There are very, very ample researches in all these area, areas, isn't it? But that is not, that is all they have of knowledge of this world alone. They, they do not believe in the next life and so they don't give it a damn. Allah said, Ulaika ma awahumu naru bima kanu yaksamun. On the other part, Inna alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati ya hadihim rabbuhum bi imanihim. Those who are righteous, and they are believers, their Lord will guide them uh, because of their Iman. There is, uh, I mentioned the issue of philanthropism, those who are humanitarians, who, who, who help humans in different uh, ways with the uh, basics of life, but they are not believers. Uh, how are we going to say that Allah is not going to reward them? Yes, Allah, I said, will reward them, but in this world, isn't it? There is a hadith of uh, Hakim bin Huzam who came to the Prophet Sallallahu one day he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, in Jahiliya I have been very, very kind to people. I have been doing this and this, everything good, righteous. He was mentioning this to the Prophet Sallam, and then the Prophet Sallam, when he opened his mouth, Sallallahu Alaihi he said, Aslamta bima aslafta min amal. He only said, you believe because of what you have done of deeds. The earlier deeds that were righteous that you did earlier, because of them Allah caused you to believe. Allah caused you to believe. It is just like a reward for you. A reward of the good things. Uh, we hope for those who are doing this good to people in this world, isn't it? That Allah will guide them also, isn't it? Because of their righteous action. The humanitarians, I mean those philanthropists who are not Muslims. إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات يهديهم ربهم بإيمانهم تجري من تحتهم الأنهار في جنات النعيم دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتهيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعواهم عن الحمد لله رب العالمين. This is just to tell you of the marvelous and honorable result and result that Allah will give them in the next life. After this, Allah mentions something very very crucial. Pertaining to man's psyche, Allah is saying, "Walau yu ajilu Allahu lil nas shar istijalhum bil khairi, la qudiya ilayhim ajalhum. Fanadul fanadul ladina la yarjuna lqa'ana fi tuqiyanihim yamahun. Wa ida masa l-insan al-dhur da'ana lijabhi, aw qa'idan, aw qa'ima. Falma kashafna anhu dhurhu marra ka'alan yaduna ila dhur masa. Kadalik azuyna lil-musrifina ma kanu yamalun. That is man." Uh, as uh, Allah is uh, portraying him here in this verses, is that he is such that uh, he, he is very much in love of anything good for him in this life. And he will pray. And sometimes if he is vexed, maybe he is angry, 
he will also try to pray against himself. And Allah is saying, if Allah were to answer all your prayers against yourselves, Allah would have destroyed you, isn't it? وَلَوْ يُعَجِّلُ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ شَرَّ اسْتِعِجَالَهُمْ بِالْخَيْرِ لَقُضِيَ إِلَيْهِمْ عَجَلُهُمْ فَنَذَرُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَعَانَا فِي طُبْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Then, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرُّ Man, by his own nature, whether a believer or non-believer, he knows that, uh, what remains of time? I don't know. I am uh, maybe on number six, isn't it? Out of 37. <laughs> you know. Almost time. Almost time? Okay, Tom. Okay, so let me just finish this and maybe I mention others, just in mention only. So man, by his own nature, by his own psych psychology or his psyche, he is such that uh, whenever anything uh, good befalls him, he is to himself. He likes it to himself. Uh, Except those whose nature and conduct has been refined by religion, by prayer and other acts of the religion. So when the Muslim insan of Duru da'ana li jambihi, aw kwa idan, aw kwa ima, falamma kashafna anhu Durahu marra ka allam yad'una ila Duru masa, kathalika zuyuna lil musrifina ma kanu ya'muna. Uh, whether a believer or non-believer, if he finds himself in a threatening, threatening situation, something that threatens his life or threatens his, uh, his uh, maslaha or whatever, you will see him praying earnestly to Allah. But when Allah will take that away from him, he will now go back to his old ways, isn't it? He will go back to his old ways. Then, uh, now I will just mention the others. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَحْلَكَنَ الْقُرُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ uh, many nations lived uh, before our own nation. Allah has destroyed them. If we want to know exactly what happened to them, let us go back to their religious history. Not only political history, which we are studying. Uh, they, uh, Allah said, Why were they destroyed? Because they went against the teachings of their Lord and Creator who has sent to each and every nation a messenger with his message, isn't it? So when they belied the messenger and they denied the message, Allah destroyed them. And that is their history, not what we are reading in our books. Then Allah said, after Allah has destroyed them, he placed us here on earth now. We are the ones living now. So that Allah will see what you will do, whether your conduct will be different from those from that of those earlier nations. If you follow their own way, the same destruction that uh, overtook them will overtake you, isn't it? So, uh, let me just uh, rush. I said blind and total attachment to the world is catastrophic. Life of belief, righteousness and humanness guided by the controller and final avita in this dispensation will be graciously rewarded in the next life. Nature of man and his psyche as regards what befalls him in life, then his intense devotion and invocation of the only power that be. I, say, I said, even the unbelievers, there's a case of someone, I used to mention it, uh, he was one of the uh, American military, uh, it was mentioned in one of the books. He has never been raised in any religious setting. His family was irreligious. There was no religious instruction in uh, his school. He was just a parachuter. They, he was the one who was saying, at the time when they were making their first flight, when they were brought out from the plane with their parachute, that was the time he didn't know how he was saying, oh God, oh God, help me. Nobody taught him God. But why was he calling on God at that time? Isn't it? It was something in it something in it, inherent in, uh, in man, according to his own creation. So, the earlier nations and responses to divine guidance and what happened to them, we know uh, Allah has been telling us in the Quran, you are all as the present inhabitants of this world. What is supposed to be your role? Your role is to be those who will now take Allah's guidance, act upon it, and then take it to those who have not uh, any idea of it. 
believe in meeting with Allah uh, after this life and respond to the message. Spiritual guidance and attitude of man uh, as the base uh, and his base desires. You see, man uh, opposes religion usually. And in the Western world, in the Western uh, writings, religion is the last thing to be mentioned, isn't it? Why? Because it opposes your base desires, your own desire, human desires. So that's why, and the devil is there also fighting you because he has already taken it, uh, taken it upon himself to mislead all the children of uh, Adam. Then he, the role of the messenger, I was saying, the, this one is number 18. The messenger, I used to ask my students uh, in lectures, uh, what made you Muslims? Why are you Muslims? Some of them will say because of the Quran, because of this, because of that. I said no. It is not because of the Quran. Uh, you are Muslims on the basis of the credentials of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was a sadiq al amin before he was sent. They all believe in him, in his truthfulness and trustworthiness, and that was the basis of the whatever he brought to you, you believe and accept it, isn't it? If he was corrupt, or if he was uh, a, dis, uh, a deceit or whatever, uh, you, nobody will uh, take him to uh, account, isn't it? But uh, just because they knew him, and that was what where many of his companions were saying, yes, we knew your life, we knew what, what you are, and uh, they, were, they knew that he has never told lie in his life. And that was why it was said one of the uh, Western philosophers, I think a lady, was saying that uh, she believed in Islam and in the Prophet ﷺ on the basis of that particular fact. That somebody who has never told lies throughout his life, till when he is now complete at the age of 40, then he will invent lie not against humans but against God. That will never be possible. So it means he was a truthful and trustworthy person who received guidance from the Lord of creation and on the basis of that we are believers, we believe. We believe in him and we believe in the message because it is when you believe in him that you believe in the message he brought, isn't it? Because if not because of him, uh, just as Allah say, mentioned, uh, let me just, I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> conclude. Uh, uh, these verses are saying whether to tell them ayat or not, not in. For the people who are not going to look at and not take the Quran in their hands or bad deal, who that is because the religious guidance is not in line with human desires. So they wanted something different. They want the Prophet to change the Quran. Could not have done it. Or bad deal, who meant to look at in himself. In not take it. Allah may you have it. I am not afraid. I say to Rabbi, I am not afraid. Could Allah show Allah who made Allah to who alaykum. If Allah had willed, I would never have recited it to you, isn't it? If Allah had willed that I would not be a prophet, I would not recite the Quran to you, isn't it? And I would never have made you, I would never have made it known to you. A whole lifetime I have stayed with you. A whole lifetime I have stayed with you for 40 years. You know me, you know my qualifications, you know my akhlaq, you know my siddiq, you know my amana, isn't it? It is on the basis of all this you are supposed to believe in him and then to believe on the basis of that in all that he brought. Because he is the one who told us Allah, who told us the Quran, who gave us the salah and all other things, isn't it? So the basis of you have been a believer is believing in the Prophet Ali, truthful and trustworthy messenger sent by Allah uh, to the whole world. Yes, let me read the others very quickly. <laughs> I said the role of human intellect in realizing the fundamental truth in life. Human folly, there is human folly in worshiping other than the giver of life. What neither brings benefit nor protects them from harm Initial unity of mankind. Allah is telling us in Surah Al-Baqarah also here. Kana nasu ummatan wahida. The whole of humanity were one nation before. 
on the basis of tawheed and worshiping Allah uh, alone. Allah is saying here, wa ma kana nas illa ummatan wahidatan fakhtalafu. Mankind were initially all in the same uh, pattern of worshiping Allah. Imam Ibn Kathir was saying in, in his tafsir, for 10 generations, 10 generations, all the, the first 10 generations were all tawhidic. They all believe in tawhid. It was after that that people now started worshiping idols, which they created from the pious people that were among them, who that became the idols of the time of Nuh salam, isn't it? And that is why Allah sent the first messenger, Nuh salam, to them to bring them back to the pattern, back to the basis. The initial unity of mankind as a family, one nation believing in Allah and their differences and subsequent divine intervention, then a man's frail and weak nature together with his stubbornness. He is so weak and frail, but he is very stubborn. Man, man's total, Allah's total control in dispensing all affairs of this world, and man's uh, turning to him in all threatening situations. Man's ungratefulness immediately has been salvaged. Man's obstinacy, ungratefulness and evil actions will descend on him and he will taste of that evil in this life before the next life, in this transient world. The similitude of the reality of this world as a to so transient and also uh, an illusion. Then uh, for Allah loves his creation and he calls them to the dar Allah who yad'u ila dar is salam. In this verses, for those who rejected their Lord and His call, they will live a life of misery here on earth and will be the worst uh, in the next life. Uh, the intense conflict and opposition between those who worship and those, who are, and those that were worshipped. Allah mentioned it in different, different places in the Quran. Divine argument to convince man to believe in his creator and giver of life. The inimitability and miraculous nature of the Quran put as a challenge. The and it is the mu'jizah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah wrongs not his creation. Inna Allah la yadlimu nasa shay'a. Allah mentioned it in this passage. Inna Allah la yadlimu nasa shay'a. Walakinna nasa anfusahum yadlimu. The transient nature of the world, like just a jami'an ka'allam yalbafu illa sa'atan minan nahari yata'arafuna baynahum. Allah mentioned that uh, this life is so transient now. Uh, when you are raised in the hereafter, it is just as if a part of the day, you will know each, everybody will recognize everybody. Everyone. <laughs> so for each nation, uh, for each nation, Allah has sent a messenger. For each nation, Allah has put an appointed time, an appointed time. Uh, Allah has programmed everything in this world. This is an admonition and advice from your Lord and a healing of all that is in the hearts. There is no moment of your existence, uh, there is no moment of your existence that is out of his far view. At every time of your life, Allah is watching, watching you. So finally I say, so let us endeavor for our good in this world and safety and good recompense uh, in the next life, hold strictly to the above principles and parts of existence. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have seen Shaykh Madhavi has told justice to this baby. In fact, he did not from our top as far as this baby is concerned. We all had what God said right from the beginning of this baby that um, Holy Quran was revealed within the period of 23 years. The first nine years, the 13 years, and the 23 years, how the Quran was revealed. And uh, he all centered his lecture on, uh, what do you call it, Tawheed, that to show all believe that we are brought here not because for us to come and play that God has, did not create you just like that or he leave us like that but 
but he sent a messenger to us to guide us and uh, we can see he said as a Muslim we were asked for the lecture that if you are a Muslim you have nothing to say nothing to alter no movement have you except what Islam has indicated for you so in fact our every lecturer has said a lot as far as this paper is concerned and he has done justice to this paper we can all bear witness that he leave no stone on turn as far as this paper is concerned and we said Akhirmakallahu Jazakallahu Bikhair I know we have a lot to say as far as this paper is concerned but I think it is I find it worthy to give the people at the higher table to make me say one word or two as far as the paper is concerned from my learned senior, my learned lecturer, my everything Professor Abakar Matazu if you have anything to say أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم وصلى الله على النبي الكريم رب شرح لي صدري وسلي أمري وأهل أقرة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I don't know why I'm always being compelled to talk even if I do not intend to I have Given a rapt attention to the <laughs> to the lecture with an erudite scholar, a colleague of ours in the university, well respected within the university and beyond. I'm sure by his presentation he has justified the confidence reposed on him as said by the chairman of this honorable occasion. He has left no stone unturned on the paper presented contemplating, and I will add, reflecting on the messages of the Holy Quran. That has been done. What has been revealed for 23 years, containing a lot of things, as it has rightly said by itself, that Ma Paragna Pilikitabi Mishay, nothing is left untouched or undiscussed in the Holy Quran. That message is communicated as well as transmitted to us by the educated, I don't like to, if you want me to borrow that word, learn it, I can give it to him, but he could not be willing to accept it. <laughs> that message has been transmitted to us in just one hour. What remains with us is that now to contemplate on those messages. Is it in Surat Al-Kamar? If I am not mistaken. So that message is communicated to us. Ours is now to also go on transmitting the said messages. Those who are present here should endeavor now to transmit it further to those who have not been opportuned to be in here. If that is so, the message could be widely circulated, not only through the is it Huda TV or what other else channel. But it is a duty upon us now to see that the, the message we have learned today is further communicated beyond one's imagination. If that is so, alhamdulillah. So my contribution as well could be, could be participatory by all and sundry here. How do I say so? If the title of the lecture is just to contemplate. So from the time we have been in this hall to now, what have we contemplated from the messages of the Holy Quran? Can anyone of us now tell us that yes, I have contemplated on one thing or the other? Let me begin with myself. If to say that the Holy Quran has rightly indicated that it has not left anything untouched, it means that the lecture has justified that means. The entirety of your life should be guided by the Holy Quran. The time you have intended to enter into your bosom with the intention of after having taken bath, I'm coming here to listen to this lecture. To the time you ignited your car, have you said Bismillah? 
to the time you have started coming here or seen some people on the road, have you said salam to them? All these messages are there and contain which are too much for us now to comprehend. So now I will begin with any one of us here. What have you contemplated? If ever the entirety of the Quran has contained a lot of messages, I'm sure the lecturer has justified that. Time has not been enough for him now to say everything he has written. I'm sure he is the type of person that if you give him one day, what he has brought to us could not be conveyed to us. He needs a week. So in essence, the message has been there and contained. It is now left us now to further communicate the said messages by pondering and contemplating on the messages contained in the glorious Quran. And so saying, like I have said, it is to be participatory. So has anybody pondered on what he could say as a contribution to this very information we are trying to pass? What message of the Holy Quran have you taken? Could anybody volunteer to say that? So I can help you in contributing. If none, I know you have something to say. By the time you go out, try to say it to others. Assalamu alaikum. From the high table, any, any contribution before going to the audience? I don't have anything to say but rather to extend the message of the Honorable CG who mandated me to be here. He asked me that uh, to tender his unreserved apology to the Mulan chairman and members of the Mulan that he had wanted to be here personally to attend this program because he has been part and parcel the Mulan activities. Yeah, I could remember he has been sponsoring uh, Ramadan Mulan activities in the past three years since the demise of uh, late uh, Enu Abdul Adil. Has been, he has been single-handedly shouldering the uh, Ramadan Mulan activity. He will be here. So what I want to add in respect of the lecture that has just been delivered, actually the erudite scholar have justified the topic given to him, he has said everything. But one thing that I want to add about the miraculous nature of the Quran, something that we are expected to reflect and ponder and believe that this message, this message of Quran actually is from God, is the suitability of the Holy Quran at all times. It is up to date. It is never outdated. It is relevant at all times. Even at this computer age that we are, if you look at the contemporary laws, information technology is always giving a challenge to the lawmakers because it always poses challenge that we have to look at it and see how we can tackle it. But if you look at the Quran, whatever challenge comes in, it is a matter of you to look at the Quran and reflect and from that you will find the solution in it. So this is one of the uh, miraculous nature of the Holy Quran that uh, everyone can reflect and believe that actually the Holy Quran is a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can see that it requires no amendment. It is relevant at all time. So wherever we find ourselves, we are expected to be ambassadors of Islam and reflect and work on the Holy Quran. If you can see another miraculous nature of the Holy Quran that is worthy of contemplating or reflecting is, uh, as I have said earlier, its stability. If you look at, at this era now of information technology that we have a uh, uh, technological development, if you look at the sign per se, all the new discoveries we are founding, you can see that we found out that science always copied the Holy Quran, not the vice versa. So if you, if you look at it in every aspect, you see, if you look at the issue of uh, 
embryology that is the formation of pregnancy how a child will be it is there in the quran the science will make a later discovery after a long research it will be discovered that it is already there in the quran formation of clouds how rain falls it is there so everything science discovers at the end of the day you will find it it is there already covered by the holy quran so this is one the this is one of the things that we are expected to reflect so that we'll have a fan belief that actually uh, this quran is from allah so that we shall be proud of being muslim therefore we shall be firm in our belief and take it as a privilege given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there are other people like us that could not reflect so we consider being a muslim as a privilege as a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore we should try to justify that confidence of being muslim in us and reflect and make good use of that privilege given to us particularly in this holy month of ramadan but it's often said it's a kakam muminai so we are expected to redouble effort and intensify ibadah so i can say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin uh, with this and i want to comment also the this one is my personal comment i can remember last week i was here when the lecture was delivered we made an observation that we could not see any recording device that will record the lecture that was made so that it could be aired it could be beneficial to the larger society but to my astonishing when i came in today i can see even now with my phone when the lead lecturer was delivering the lecture I was also seeing it live on Al Huda TV. Yeah, yeah, I can see actually this is a worthy of commendation. Maybe the only thing that will remain, we need to see a Mulan Facebook also where all these activities also could be put there so that for reflections thereafter. We can see now we thank God this lecture does not start and end here. It is there online. It could be viewed at any point in time actually this is a kudus to uh, mulan leadership jazakumullah khairan jazakumullah khairan bi janna thank you very much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum and i'm here to welcome our elder and class to mulan before handing mic to the audience i find it worthy to give this mic to our number 3 of the higher court of justice honorable justice kabiru ahmed if he has anything to say before handing mic to the flow my lord sir Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi <coughs> the lecturer the professor and my senior at the secondary school level <laughs> I'm sorry to come in late I would have been, been here early to learn and to be educated on what you are going to say despite that my short coming of coming late My learned brother here just Kabiru has said that it is being recorded therefore from the recorded I will inshallah make a copy of it and go through it in addition the fact that I came late I have been on my own reading on the miracles of the holy quran more especially we are or we can recall the lectures normally given by direct although i know this what has direct said must be reflected in the lecture that was just delivered i therefore adopt and i associate with myself whatever the, <laughs> the learned professor has said thank you very much jazakallah khairan kaseera may god reward you abundantly <laughs> Allah wa akbar Thank you very much our senior colleague uh, 
it's like we are running out of time and due to the time I think we just give three people from this side three people from the other side if they have anything to say comment observation and other things so that we can round up because it is almost one o'clock now thank you
Mimi ni mwana wa 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 Mimi
Uh, I couldn't remember the question that was asked earlier. Uh, I remember the question for the contribution made by the Okay, okay. Yes, uh, I think I mentioned it in my lecture. The plum trophies that are contributing, I should be clear, isn't it? That uh, if you are uh, not uh, uh, this uh, Christian S and whatever, they are helping humans and uh, this are, uh, they are just helping Allah's creation. And Allah knows what they are doing, and Allah knows the best way to reward them. But He said, He said clearly that as long as you don't have belief, if you are not a believer, then definitely you are not going to get any reward in the next life. Your reward will be given here and now. It is here and now. Allah will give you uh, fame, uh, renown, and whatever you are after. Because most of them, and that's why Allah said in the beginning of those verses, Mankani yuridul hayata dunya wa zinataha. Anyone who loves the world and it is embellishment, we uh, are going to pay him in full, in line with what he desires. If they are not sincere people because they don't, do not even believe in Allah. They don't even believe in the next life. They don't believe in the next, in the world of Jannah and uh, hell, isn't it? So they have nothing there, isn't it? What they are going to get is here because of what they are uh, doing here, because they believe only in this life here. Then uh, the right of contemplation, I think uh, somebody raised the issue. Yes, I, I mentioned the tafsir. What we are saying, you see uh, the Quran, you can best understand it if you have the knowledge of Arabic. Because it is an Arabic Quran. Allah mentioned this in two places in the Quran. Inna anzalnahu Quran in Arabiya la allakum ta'kilun in beginning of Surah Yusuf, Surah Yusuf alayhi salam. And then, Inna ja'alnahu Quran in Arabiya also la allakum ta'kilun. Allah uses akil. Akil means intellect. So, it is the best language, the richest that Allah chose to use in order to pass his everlasting message to the end of time. And that is why, if you don't have the knowledge of Arabic, I have been telling you my students of Islamic studies, that you can never be a successful scholar of Islam without the knowledge of, uh, of Arabic. We had even Orientalist Westerners who were well versed in Arabic just because they want to go to the classical uh, books. I will remember one of my colleagues uh, in Islamabad, uh, where I was teaching, he was telling us that while he was doing his PhD in American University in Cairo, he noticed an old European lady, old European lady in the library, and he was saying eight to eight. Eight to eight every day she is there in the library. Eight to eight. Eight in the morning to eight in the night. It's only in the middle after she should go for some snacks. And what was she doing? She was going through our classical Arabic literature. She was reading, okay? She was a European, but she, uh, she bothered, uh, she cared to learn Arabic, and that's why she was able to, uh, to go through those books. What I'm trying to say is that, uh, the one who said Tadabu, Allah wants us to reflect over the verses as they are in Arabic. The interpretation is different, isn't it? Tafsir is not what we are in, what we mean here. When you reflect over the verses, and especially if you are reading the, in the late hours of the night. Contem I mentioned uh, one of the scholars was saying that he preferred reading, uh, reciting only Zalzul and also uh, al Qaeda from al Qaeda for the whole of the night. Over and over, reflecting over their meanings. Yes, so that is the best way you can do it is when you have the knowledge of Arabic. But uh, you cannot just have your own idea or opinion of the Quran unless and until you go back to the sources, isn't it? You go to the well-respected scholars of the Ummah, those accepted by the Ummah and then you take from them. No. Then the uh, issue of the torsion of the Quran, yes I know, لا يمسو إلا المطاحرون, I think that is the verse she is referring to. Yes, uh, there are two interpretations given by scholars. Some are saying, La Yamasu Illa Mutaharun is referring to the angels. But the general uh, uh, opinion was that the, those who are not pure, pure, those who are not pure by means of ablution, you know, Udu, Udu, which we, they, they are not supposed to touch the Quran. This is because of the, uh, the you can say, the holy nature of the book, and so as to give respect to what, uh, what is supposed to be respected. And these are the words of Allah. 
the creator of the heavens and the earth, they must be respected and they are not just to be taken anyhow and placed anyhow by anybody in any condition. No, we have to give that uh, respect and that's why scholars mention that. But there are fatwa people are given here and they are scholars. Uh, if there are conditions of necessity, okay, conditions of necessity, for example, uh, women in their fields or something of that nature, not, but not taking the whole of the Quran. They are saying maybe a portion of the Quran. They can take the portion of the Quran and recite it, or they can recite some verses from their memory for protection or something of that nature. That's it. Eh? But uh, to sit, to sit and recite the Quran, the whole of the Quran, taking it, you need to have evolution. This is very, very important. Yes, thank you very much. I think that is all. Huh? Yes, yes. yes. That's all I thought. <laughs> I think that's all we can say right now. Okay, just to share on the drone organizations. What is most annoying is that most of those drone organizations are agencies from the United Nations. The one thing that comes to the point is that what are the workings of the United Nations and who finances are the of the United Nations? You and I, but say you and I can the country A and country B, and even Nigeria is contributing to financing the activities of the United Nations. And if that is it means that you and I have certain contribution, they do it our on behalf of our home state by our country. But however, there are certain individuals who are known as individual donations. So it means that it is now a way to for to able to sit in that we hold our city to go to organizations with the humble of not obtaining those type of conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Matai. I think we have now come to the end of this lecture. So I will now hand over the mic to the Thank you, my Lord. We are most uh, grateful. Uh, and then, in fact, uh, the chairman of Malam come and give the proof of that.